Okay, welcome all of you for this uh, introduction to our project, what we will be doing in our computer network course. As I have told in the class, uh, this is a common project component where you will be evaluated from Java pro course perspective as well as from computer networks. Um, as you are aware, we are doing a lot of, uh, one second, I will just hold on, one second. Yeah, Achana. Okay, okay, fine. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Sure, sure. I'll start. Okay, you do whatever you want. Okay, yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, okay, fine. Now let me view all of them. Admit all. Yeah, I suggest that uh, those who are in the classroom, if possible, to avoid uh, hogging too much of bandwidth. Uh, you can listen to the class in case uh, you are able to hear properly. You can keep the uh, source code or uh, uh, things ready, uh, which you can watch on your laptop, but avoid uh, hogging the Wi-Fi. Okay, if you are on your own data plan, no issues. Okay, so let me uh, start. Come back to the project. Uh, so it's going to be a joint project where. Uh, we will be evaluating you from the networking as well as from Java perspective. So what I plan to do today is uh, give you a short overview. We will be anyway covering the sockets TCP in detail as part of our class. Uh, and then what is loopback interface, which you will be using it in the demo today. And then I will go through the multi-chat application, which I already shared in the classroom, uh, explaining the source code and how it works. Okay. And then we'll have a demonstration. Uh, preferably, I would like to cover by 11 a.m., uh, not uh, beyond that, or maybe 10.55 to give time for attendance. Okay, guys. Now, all of you are aware, TCP is a layer 4 protocol, which sits on top of IP, which is uh, layer 3 network layer. Now, what does the TCP do? Okay, let us understand this first. As I mentioned, we have a protocol stack, right? and then so many routers come in between. This is a host. On host, entire post protocol stack OSI layer is running because uh, uh, application is running here. Naturally, there will be entire protocol stack running on the host. And then there is host A. Then there is a, some other host you are contact trying to reach out and that is host B. So now when we are trying to use some application. Now, whatever we are trying to use is the multi-chat application, Java application. Doesn't matter whether you use a Java code or a C application or something which is sitting at the topmost layer, layer of the OSI. Okay. Um, one second. Yeah, Jocelyn. Hello. Uh. Oh, A and B is it? Oh, okay, fine. Yeah, sure. Uh, I think I need to wait for some time. A and B are not able to hear. Um, anyway, I will repeat once they are also ready um, instead of just holding on. So maybe this can be uh, heard in the recording also, right? So let me continue. At the same time, I will repeat once they are back. Okay. So applications are running at the topmost layer. And hello, hello, hello. Yeah. I am not able to hear you also. I will wait for two minutes and then I will, uh, anyway, recording will be there. Okay. So, I am not going to take any calls now uh, to this disturbing the flow. Let them, let them join whenever they can and then we can also hear, they can record, see the recording. So, let me again start from the beginning, hoping that they are on board. Now we are trying to 
use the network for some application that's why we are all here learning about network so this uh, project is about how do we make use of the network in our application so the thing is the application is going to run on the host which will make use of all the OSI layer normally we are not uh, bothered about uh, all the seven layers we talk about only IP L3 network layer and then we have TCP uh, L4 layer then we will have an application okay okay so now socket is something which is operating at L4 layer okay socket is something which is operating at L4 layer so let me what is it actually let me explain it with uh, another picture so we are trying to provide a pipe the pipe means the data which is put into this pipe suppose you are putting d1 some d2 d3 they are received at the end other end in the same order so if i am sending a video stream like right now what you are watching is a video stream which is also using the tcp and that is being delivered to different uh, hosts connected to it okay so this this tcp connection makes use of the ip network ip protocol and then of course some l2 layer down to send those packets across the network and reaches on the other end now applications which is running on two ends of this like if you are doing a, a wipe call or a skype call or uh, right now we are doing a multi chat application so that will be one per, one will be putting the data in and the other one will be reading it and similarly don't think that the pipe is always one sided or a, no, no no it's a duplex connection the data flows in both directions in a pipe so uh, both applications can parallelly send data and both will be received okay uh, two way communication on the pipe but only thing is the sequence of data which is flowing through the pipe is guaranteed now let me talk about this now tcp connections are between two host or subnets or processes running on the host so you may have a confusion based on whatever i explained you may say that it is between the host but actually the truth is it is the processes running on the host so though i told you that the tcp connection is coming from the host from host a to host b there is need not be only one connection between the host okay if i say that it is between the host then there can be only one connection between two one pair of host but actually it is between the applications running on the host to some other applications or matching application on the the other host so there can be multiple tcp connections from a host from multiple applications running on it to another one host or maybe it can be having different host and then they have different applications running the connections can be there so you may have a physically one network but there can be multiple tcp sockets connected pipes going in both direction between different applications running on different hosts now the problem is you are saying that it is on the host the connection is there the socket connection i am saying there are different pipes let me call this as a p1 this is another pipe p2 this is another p3 now what happens you are using the common network to feed all these things okay either data is coming from outside world you will be feeding it as well as take the data out from the host so there is a flow of information on both direction between different applications running on a particular host but they all use the same interface the hardware underneath to send those packets so they are multiplexing it while sending and demultiplexing it on receiving so there should be some mechanism for the host which is receiving it or while sending it to make sure that it knows which pipe it is supposed to send and then what data it is expecting from which pipe okay uh, because uh, one high, uh, the Skype call is going on uh, similarly you have a YouTube also running in your laptop that means whatever data is meant for YouTube should be delivered to YouTube application whatever data uh, conversation you have with the Skype that should be delivered to the Skype application so there should be unique way of finding out one particular data connection that is established between 
two different applications running on different hosts. Let me repeat, you need to have a mechanism of identifying every connection that you have between different applications running on different hosts and that should be one unique identifier. Now what is that identifier? Now that will be based on the host, suppose this is a host, it is going to have one IP address and we are all agreeing that, I sorry this is not IP like this, IP. You are all agree that unique IP addresses are there on the network for every host in the network. So let us assume that there is a unique IP address, IP A is there, some IP address and then it is communicating with another host which is maybe IP B, that is another IP unique IP address. Now this is not enough because I am also telling you that there can be multiple applications running on this machine talking to different applications running on this machine. Now that should be another pair of things to indicate that the connection is between these two applications, another connection is between these two applications even if it is between the two same two hosts, okay, same pair of uh, IP, devi uh, IP devices or hosts, okay, host on the network is identified by the unique IP address which is a universal address. So that should be one more set of um, information to be given. Now what is happening is let me tell on this host you are having multiple connections TCP pack sockets connected to the host. Now on every TCP connection on one end of the TCP connection there is a port number okay port number which is unique number given to all the TCP connections on this host host A. Now imagine there is a host B you will have a unique port numbers on this given to it okay who is allocating it whenever the connection is established the port numbers are allotted and they are all unique numbers now once you have a pair of port numbers and pair of ip addresses you have a four tuple okay four tuple which is unique for a particular connection between two different hosts it can be different application whatever may be you have pair of ports, port numbers, one port number on this side, okay, on this side of the connection and then other port number on the other end of the connection. So you have one end IP connection, uh, IP address, as other end has another IP address. So uh, you don't call it as a source and a destination here because this is communication is two way. So there is a IP address here, there is a IP address here and there is a socket number or a, sorry, port number one here, port number two here. Now this values, four values, Four tuple identifies one particular TCP connection between two different hosts and two different applications because applications are actually listening to a particular port once it is identified. So that is how a TCP connection is established. Okay. So let us not spend too much time here. Like me now having introduced this to you. Uh, sorry, I have not admitted many people. Okay. Okay. Now. TCP is a connection oriented because I told you that the order in which the data is sent, it is received at the other end. So if you want to have a TCP connection established, you have to have a um, handshake between the two hosts. So you cannot just start sending the data. It is like you calling someone, making sure that the other side is picked up, then you start conversation. So this is called TCP connection establishment. So there is some messages exchanged between the uh, two parties. And whoever can be initiating the socket connection doesn't matter. But the connection once it is established, both of them can communicate on the pipe. It is who initiates it doesn't matter. Like what you, when you make a phone call, either it could be you making a phone call to someone or other person may call you. But after the call is established, both of you use the channel equally, right? You share the information. It's not that I initiated the call that I have a, uh, no rights to disconnect. No, the other person also can disconnect. So it is equally, um, the both the parties are, uh, having rights on communicating over the channel okay or the uh, socket so one more thing is in on ethernet we call the packets as frames what is flowing in the ethernet as a frame right um, let me tell you uh, we call it as a frame on ethernet and then we keep we call it as packets on ip packets okay ip packet ethernet frames now this is tcp segments okay the one individual unit in a tcp uh, what is coming to IP is called TCP segments okay that you remember these are the different names that you are given now I have already explained this to you each application talks to one port okay the same application can have multiple connection also it's not that one application need to have only one connection 
but it will have unique different port number. So port numbers are unique for every connection that you have on one end as well as the other end also. So that way you are able to identify the uh, particular connection that you have established. Okay, I think this is uh, clear hopefully then we will get into the applica uh, this Java application fast. So let me tell you that each host can have multiple TCP connections and it is a duplex uh, both way data can transfer exactly two endpoints with each other okay there are exactly two endpoints for the tcp connection one on the one side of the host other is other host okay yeah, there is no multicast or unique uh, you know uh, there is no broadcast or multicast are possible in the tcp socket you cannot have one pipe coming and then you know distributing to multiple hosts no this one to end to end one one uh, one on one connection okay it's a unicast but uh, as well as the two parties are concerned there is no multicast in this uh, tcp connection okay and then it has a TCP header and data as usual like any other uh, um, uh, protocol and you have a source and destination port okay this is what I was talking to you about uh, IP has source IP address and destination IP address and TCP has source port number and destination port number so these two together the TCP and IP that's why whenever you see anywhere there is a TCP IP TCP IP that is because they are tied to each other uh, TCP and IP are tied to each other so this is how they identify a connection okay now, now I am going to introduce you one more thing, okay. Suppose you are a network engineer and you want to test your network application, okay. Um, what do you do? You have to send your application, network application it is. It has to use the network, okay. And you should have a live network with routers and then uh, you have to run it, uh, your application on the other end. Maybe uh, you are calling it as a server and this is a client, even a web application you can imagine. Now, what happens is, you need a, a entire infrastructure for testing your application. Suppose you are building right now whatever chat application you are going to build. Server is there, client port is there, then you are going to test it out on a network. Now, will you be given a network to test the software which is not even completely working fine? Uh, it may have bugs, it may do, it may not work also. In that case, how do you test your uh, thing before putting it on an actual live network? So, that's the mechanism which they have thought of and provided one way of doing it that is called loopback IP address. This is a particular IP address identified by Windows okay for it to have a local loop. I will talk about this local loop uh, shortly. This is the network okay 127.0.0. .0 uh, if you recall it is a, actually a class A address. This is the network ID portion. This is the host ID portion. Now this entire network is reserved for this kind of testing purpose okay you cannot use this ip address for communicating between two different hosts on the network because not all the ip addresses uh, given to you are usable for any purpose there are some restrictions some are unique purposes they are used for and like uh, some number 112 or uh, no uh, there is a emergency number 100 they reserve some numbers for uh, fire allow, fire uh, you know a session if you want to call so such numbers are reserved right it is not used to a normal user similarly this uh, 127.00 is a network which is given for this local loop purpose now let me explain what is local loop suppose you have an application which is you have us both uh, right now in our case we want to test our server and the client application on a network you don't need to actually connect it to a network you can actually simulate it as if the packets are going through the network and coming out of the network by using this address 127.0.0.1 in uh, you have to have a particular ip address so i am going to use this ip address from this network okay 000 then what happens is you are not even going out of your host you are in the host you run the server application i call it as yes you run a client application then what do you do it uses the network stack TCP IP stack what is there in your program or sorry in your laptop uh, provided by Windows and then it comes back using the same stack okay same stack on the same host remember it is not even going out of your network even if you don't have a uh, switch off the Wi-Fi you have uh, disconnected the LAN connection you are I know isolated you are not connected to the network but still you can check test your network applications using this loopback mechanism. Okay, that is a philosophy of using the loopback and um, I have explained it here which you can read it up later. Now our main crux of this uh, talk is about the project. 
So you are going to write a Java application wherein there is going to be a server. I will call it as chat server. Okay. And then there is a there is not one multiple client. Okay. Clients. I will have client one, client two. Now what are they? They are all individual applications. And server is only one. Okay. Now you need to have an idea of where the server is running, which IP address the server is running. Uh, in our case, right now we are going to use it uh, 127.0.1, which is running on your own machine, and then your client also going to run on the same machine. So you can identify the server running. So what you do is you bring up the server first. That is important. That server should be running. Now I told you that there is a port number associated with the socket connection that you are trying to establish, right? This side of the port number you can decide because you are starting the application and that is decided by your code that you have written. But you cannot choose any arbitrarily any particular number or uh, port. It is a 16 bit number, but um, in binary form. Uh, so the, you, there are some uh, port numbers which you can use it for uh, user application. Some are reserved and uh, you know that AT uh, and FTP and HTTP, they all have a standard port numbers. You cannot use it for uh, our normal applications. So user applications can use some port number, TCP port number, which is used in this application is 9001, okay. Uh, for some reason it is used. Now what is happening is, what you do is, you start the multi-chat application server first. Server is starting and it is going to wait on this particular port number 9001. Now once this is waiting for a connection, suppose you have a client running and you know that this IP address, there is a server which is waiting for my connection, you can start the socket connection establishment okay, uh, from this end. So this client is trying to send a request to the server that I want to have a TCP socket connection with you. Then this guy will also inform, the client will also inform his side of the port number which it is reserving for this particular connection and then they this guy sends an acknowledgement and with the exchange of some three, at least minimum three uh, messages or if there will be much more. Uh, to make sure that what is the kind of network in between, what type of data to be sent, okay. Some uh, handshake happens between them and the TCP connection is established. Then once that is established, the server can actually send messages to him, messages to the client and send client also can respond back. So they are running on different uh, hosts on a network, they can talk to each other, okay. That's the uh, one thing. Now, what about the other, uh, it's not that the server is only uh, establishing a connection with only one client, it can have multiple clients connected to it, okay. So all the, uh, simultaneously all these clients can be connected to a server and they are going to do a multi-chat. Now, let me explain how this whole thing is going to work, okay, before I show the code. Uh, any questions from anybody before I start? Okay, no chat window also, nothing is there. No problem. Now, server is running. It is waiting on 901. Now, this is going to have one more. Okay. Uh, assume that the client is, this client is 1. And then the, with the same 9001. Please remember, it is the same port number. This client is 2. Now, you may wonder that how does the server differentiate between these two TCP connections? There should be at least one number out of the four tuple should be different. Now, actually between these two, IP addresses are different. This is IP2, let me call it as IP3 um, and then this is IP1. Now, the tuples are for this particular thing. Suppose you choose, this guy has chosen 9005 suppose. Now, this TCP connection uh, is IP1, IP2, 9001, 9005. So, this is a unique four tuple number. Here compares maybe it is some uh, 9100 suppose then this is also a unique number. So even if it establishes with the same host, it will have a different port number which will differentiate between the TCP connection, this connection and this connection. So there can be multiple TCP connections between the same host if port numbers are different and naturally port numbers will be different for every connection that you have. Now let me explain how does it work okay this Java application. Uh, I hope you have seen the code or you, I already shared the code, you can also look at it. Um, it's not very difficult to understand, I suppose. Now, server, client, what is the intent? Actually, let me tell you what we want to do. We want to actually uh, type some messages in this area and then carriage return we give. 
then what happens is I, this is a client side i am saying client is only you know interface with the uh, user server is in the back end and it is running without the, any user interaction provided to it okay so in our in our case we are running both in the same machine but in reality it will be running on two different machines or you know the different machines multiple machines it can be okay so now let me tell you what is happening this is on the client okay assume that one client is sitting and a client will have a window okay this also has a window and i have a place for typing some messages and this client to this is c1 it also has a window let me call it as c2 this is let me call it as c1 now what happens is they have already established a tcp connection okay tcp socket is there between the pipe is there okay and 9001 on that side and uh, there is some other port number on this side now what is done is the java code which is running as a client as soon as you type something on the window and carries it in your port that the entire message that you have typed is packaged and sent to the server okay now similarly this guy also will send it now as a server i know uh, this message has come from c1 and this message has come from c2 now this application does only one job which is broadcasting back to all the clients which are connected okay so remember the received messages are printed here okay received messages are printed here what you type is here so once you type one message and carriage return this will be erased and you can type another message and similarly when you type something here and send uh, carriage return you give it is erased that message is packed a package and sent to the server now the server's job is to send that back okay now suppose if i am getting message one from client one i send the message one to all the guys yeah go ahead uh, any doubts uh, please keep your uh, microphone on mute in case you are not having any questions okay so when you get the message you know which client is sending the message and then server's job is to send it back to all of them okay that's the job now while sending it it will also say that i received this message from c1 so let me tell you now suppose from c1 i say hi then i get a here hi i also get a c1 hi now suppose c2 says hello okay then i get c2 hello and c2 hello what is happening i am receiving it on the server side sending it to everybody again but i will append it with the client which has sent it so that way i know who is sending it now you can start here in this particular application there is no specific uh, chat that you can do with a particular person whatever you chat with anybody will be seen by everyone else because it is a broadcast now as what i want you to do is to make it private message uh, and you can you should be able to block some client from receiving your messages those features i want you to do uh, like a, you become a whatsapp guy and uh, if you start managing whatsapp what you do that is what you are going to do now okay so let me now having you now now one more thing i'll tell you before i go to the code so now i have to give a name for every uh, client right so what will they do once the tcp connection is established the server will send a request for please send your name okay message uh, it will say that please send your name of your client what do i what should i identify you uh, can you keep on mute please uh, okay thank you so server will send a message to the client whoever is establishing a connection first asking for a name now the client will send a name okay suppose i am sending mauli now that will be processed by the server to know whether it is unique or not because there may be somebody already registered with mauli in that case it will say that no send me another unique name so what does server do it identifies unique names and then makes a list of all the unique names as well as the connections to them the socket connection what you have so after they do any client new client joining sends a message it knows what are the uh, registered clients right now with me to all of them the server is going to send a message back okay that's all is the current implementation now let us go to the code now okay uh, in case if you are not seen the code so before i code the code let me try to see whether i can run it actually uh, 
okay server i will run run java okay let me see whether it comes up so i have picked up vs code because all of you are using vs code only for your uh, java uh, course so i thought i should also use the same one message ah the chat server is running so that indicates that uh, we are successful in um, making our server running now now let me start the client client java I hope this is the client code. Okay, so let me run the client now. Okay, there is a chat, sir. If one client process is open two times on a machine, that should have a port number or same port number or different. Very good question. It will have a different port number, and actually you can have multiple connection with the um, port number. Uh, okay, I will hide it. Okay. Okay, now as I told you, we have to have 127.0.01. Oh, sorry. Now, what are you doing? It is saying that uh, once you open the client, right, it is asking for an IP address of the server, the chat server which is running. Suppose it is running on some other IP address. If you know your friend is running the chat server, you can connect to that uh, IP address. You can find the IP address of that person in the, within the LAN. Actually, you can start communicating with each other by if you know the IP address of the person, then you can give that IP address if the IP uh, the chat server is running in this machine in our machine. Now we are doing trying to connect between the same machine, so I am giving the loopback address and OK. Now what is is it has established a connection now. Once it has come here means it has established a connection with that particular IP address uh, on that server is running, so that's why it is able to connect. So remember client. To establish a connection with the server, server should be running and waiting for connections like uh, any web server. Now, what do you do? I will say, okay, my name is Mauli. Now, I hope this is uh, a first window. So, um, I am going to type hi. Now, I am the only person, it is sending it to me. Now, Amir asked the question whether can I use the same client application, multiple instances. So, I am going to do the same. I am going to run another instance of the same application okay now what do i do let me get another window okay i got another instance of this i am going to establish a connection with the same server which is running on my machine now now only thing i need to make sure that i don't give say mauli here suppose if i give mauli it will i have not tried it it will say no choose a screen name so it is not allowing me to give the same name so let me say mauli 2 okay now what happened you have two chat windows which are there this is mauli2 so hello mauli2 is saying hello which is coming to both of us now welcome mauli2 so i mauli is sending uh, welcome to mauli2 so that you see that it is appending with the name of the client who is sending the message and then sends it to everybody so, hi, how are you? So, this is how this is happening, right? What is happening? Each client, whatever you type here, okay? After you give a carriage return, the entire thing is packaged and sent to the server and server sends back to all of them who are registered clients are. Now, this simple broadcast uh, thing is happening right now. Okay, now let us understand the code quickly. Now, let me understand, you know, uh, very high level, I will give you the overview, okay? I am going to look at the server code. These are all the packages that we are using. And it's a client server protocol. So server is a class chat server. It has a port number which I mentioned to you, 9001. It is using a hash set. Why it is using hash set? You know that if I store all the names of the clients, I should be able to look for a particular client name. Uh, when I am trying to send one by one uh, to broadcast when I am doing, I should be able to reach out to them without much of delay. Okay, there shouldn't be, uh, the access time should be same for all the entries in the hash. 
uh, table okay and let me hide this guy so this itself is taking so much time okay now this is a hash set for names okay all the client names are put here okay and then you need to have you should be able to write to the names right so there are some um, print writer is, you know, is established for every socket on the every socket so uh, when the server is getting a message from one of the client it is supposed to send it to all other clients which are connected to it so all the names are there this is to only to make sure this is not used every time this is only to make sure that the names in this particular hash are unique okay you cannot have you know uh, same names in this hash set so whenever you are giving a name this uh, particular hash set is used to verify whether you are giving a new client name or not that's all after that this is not used we are using only the writers which is a list of writers uh, valid uh, clients which are connected to the server so whenever i get a message from any of the client i send it to every writer uh, so as a broadcast one by one see don't think that it's uh, like a broadcast message it is sent because it is a multiple tcp connection i told you that broadcast is not supported in tcp so you have to send one by one though you get a feeling that it is message is broadcast to all the client actually what is happening is it is writing into every client one by one okay so i will explain the code later on uh, right now okay not uh, too far now this is the entry point main of this server code it is printing that chat server is running actually it should have been early, later but before even you know uh, starts running it is saying that it starts running right now and then it is calling a server socket which is an api uh, it is creating an object okay um, with a port number that means it is actually establishing a tcp socket okay creating a tcp socket and once port number is given here okay let uh, you create a socket which is uh, object is created and then you try to accept the connection between the uh, so client no this is a server right so this is actually what is he doing is it is creating a socket on a port waiting waiting for connections to happen okay so on the server side what is happening is it create a uh, socket object server socket object and then accepts call accept connections to that particular port number so it is in the waiting mode okay there is nothing else server is doing just wait for indefinitely for accepting connections now how does anybody connect to it ip address should be known and 9001 should be known and they have established a connection and then it will start okay then once it starts it is it is going to be uh, communicating with the client now how does it start it is going to create a thread for every connection that it establishes with the client one thread is going to be created so there is one server process and on top of it some multiple threads are running so each thread is specific to a particular client why is the separate thread is required because each client may be communicating at the uh, any moment of you know any time so you should be in a position to receive the call uh, data and then um, uh, communicate back to it so it creates a thread and then it keeps the socket value inside the class uh, no it is passed as a parameter and then it is uh, written into the socket variable there in the uh, thread and then it calls a run method run method is where it will be establishing a reading and writing okay any data comes in it is going to read it so buffer reader the client is sending any data it is going to be read into this particular stream okay uh, using the socket input stream it is receiving all the thing whatever carriage return you give the message which has come it is written and then you are going to write into the out okay uh, now this is actually this out is you are not writing right now you are creating a uh, pipe for this server to send data to okay uh, the from server to the client connection okay this out is used for sending the data out so now initially when you are establishing a connection it is going to ask you please uh, give your number name unique name you give so using this out it is going to print ln it is the message which is going server is sending the submit name command to the client now client on receiving that command it is going to send a unique name to it and 
that name is going to be verified against whatever you have stored already okay so it is doing the initial uh, checking of your name is unique or not once it is unique you are now ready to communicate with this guy and name accepted message is given to it and you, then your window will be uh, you now enabled on the client side that you can start typing with the uh, sending messages to it okay so what happens is initially for every uh, client connection coming in there is one thread creator and that thread is going to check with the client and they ask for a new name and then it is going to establish a connection once the name is accepted it will put it in the names uh, hash set there and then it will start uh, waiting for messages to come from you so like this what it is doing it is keep on receiving connections from different clients the server is always waiting and whenever it successfully gets a connection it is spawning a thread see remember a new thread is going to take care of you know, any uh, interaction with the client the process is continues to wait so the main server is continued to wait for new connections and every connection that it establishes it is going to create a thread and those threads are going to take care of receiving any messages now what is it supposed to do server is not only receiving the message it is supposed to send it to all of them when any message is received right so that job is i am not going to explain this cache catch uh, is, you know uh, is, uh, exception handling i am not going to talk right now okay now let me uh, given a time limit i will go to the client and explain you what is happening on the client side and then we will uh, continue maybe if required one more section or uh, one more video we can do so on the client side what happens you are having a gui okay gui is required for you to get the uh, message from uh, client uh, sorry user so it establishes that j frame and other things which you can always uh, uh, read about it and then it is supposed to take some action when carriage return is pressed okay after the message is printed and carriage return is pressed so there is a action listener which is a event uh, you know um, it's like a uh, it captures an event okay whenever a carriage return is given it is processed okay it's like an isr i can call it as a in terms of uh, interrupt or something but it's like an event capturing mechanism wherein you are supposed to capture the text which is being typed so you are getting the text what you have been typed by the user and then it is written into the out uh, of its own what is established okay it is supposed to send it to the server now whatever you have typed it is sending to the server its job is only sending to the server it is not it doesn't even know what are the other clients in the system each client captures the message typed by somebody and sends it to the server and server is sending back to the all the client even this client which whatever is typed it will not know unless it is coming from the uh, server back okay so it is not print, trying to print it on its own uh, window as soon as you type it uh, packages package it and send it now what is happening on the server side when you receive any any uh, data okay uh, now let me explain the loop wherein you go through the uh, okay now you got a input okay you got a input from accept the message from the client this fellow this particular thread which is accepting a uh, client and it has to broadcast them now how does it broadcast it is doing the print writers writer all the writers that means the server side you know what are the clients are connected so all the output writers are maintained in one particular collection so what you do is you append every message that you are sending with message and gap okay one space this is a fixed message it's a token to inform the client that i am sending you the message now which you have to display it on the on your window so whatever you are seeing here whatever comes here okay this particular thing okay is actually prepended or uh, appended uh, not appended it was prefixed with the, prefixed with the message string so client will read that and understand that okay this is a message that i need to put it on the um, window so it will do it uh, it will remove that message portion and then remove rest of the string it will put it now what you have to now think is can i add more features here using this mechanism using this skeleton code that you have adding more features to it and 
i will tell you one of the messages one of the thing what i want you to implement is uh, private message i want you to do a private message to and your particular client that also you will be able to do using the code that i will stop here and we will continue after you go through the code maybe one more if required uh, we can discuss it uh, during the on, of online or offline classes okay so thanks for your time and let me stop here maybe attendance can be taken any doubts on the middle you can ask me on the chat i am not going to talk anymore